After the Christmas rush ends, you need to start sourcing new product ideas because that's how you grow an account. It's the fastest way to grow sales on Amazon is to simply add new products. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm going to walk through the new product opportunity explorer, also known as the product marketplace guidance. And you can find some new product opportunities in here. So I'll put a link to this at the top of the description. You can check it out, see what results you get. Uh, and we'll go kind of give a tutorial through here. So in here, you can see there's 207 products that it's saying, hey, these are great ideas. You should launch them. How do they know? Because they're in demand. People, uh, people are searching for them. Uh, and with all the supply chain woes, Amazon knows that there's certain categories that are hit harder, like appliances, for example, harder to get that supply chain up and running. And it's really kind of going to be a couple more years before we see the supply chain return to normal anytime soon. I just launched a new incense product. I have the number one on Amazon's new releases for incense. And so it's by no surprise they're putting in here a link to some Palo Santo smudging sticks here. Now, interestingly enough, you go to click on this, they, uh, they forgot to program the HTTPS in this. So you might get a little bit of a red alert. Um, and I tried to try to manually go through it. wouldn't let me. So just to fix that, just type in the ASIN itself and it'll get you over there just fine. So you can see what the product is that they're suggesting. And it's number 98 in incense, 46,000 home and kitchen. Let's compare that against to uh, my Age of Sage product in here. So I'll type in Age of Sage smudge and we'll see here how I'm stacked up against it. Um, so BSR populating right in there. You can see number 20 in incense, 14,000 on home and goods. So I'm already beating the product that they're suggesting that I should launch, but nonetheless, uh, still a great product opportunity to dive into. So that's how I knew, um, this was going to be a good product opportunity because I saw some of the data and whatnot. So if we go over to, so that's to show like, Hey, here's new products. You should enter these into the space. There's, they're in demand, that kind of thing. If you click over into advanced research, this is going to look very similar to your jungle scouts, your, um, your helium 10 tools of the world where, uh, there's advanced filtering to see like how something would perform in any particular category. So, You've got a return rate of 4% in living room chairs. That's the default thing that they have in here. What I don't like is it's kind of hard to like find new products in here. So if you type in something like wine glass, um, the filtering is very much static built based on how search trees are within Amazon. So it's a little clunky, but it's their first time to market. I'll give them a little bit of a pass on this. Um, and it is nice that it at least does select the filters. But so I sell a lot of wine glasses under my brand Momster. Um, getting some high level metrics here though is kind of interesting. So it gives you like the product units sold number of units, you know, in this Brad nose in 30 days, uh, it gives you the glance views, which is kind of similar. You see when glance views go up, units sold go up, makes sense. Um, again, though, I think one of the coolest factors though, is if, if you want to know like what your return rate is against, um, the category, this is a very fast and easy way to figure that out, right? So if, if we know that the return rate is 3.83%, but your return rate is 10%, then you got a problem typically related to logistics and you got to fix it, that kind of thing. Search to product purchase ratio. So almost 1% here, um, a little bit lower in this particular category for the wine glasses. You can see the number of sellers, the number of ASIN, 64,000. Um, one of the coolest things, though, as we start to scroll down, I, I don't necessarily think the tabletop occasion is very helpful at this point, but it's there. You can see price points. That's helpful. Material price. You know, so if I wanted to make a plastic versus a glass or a stainless steel type item. Um, but but really what kind of frustrated me, though, is like, hey, cool, I got all this uh, macro data, but then I go down to the bottom here and then there's like, you know, not a whole lot of other information. It doesn't say, hey, I want to, you know, you should launch a wine glass that says X, Y, Z. It doesn't have a lot of that great information. And so I find myself going back to Amazon and just basically, you know, let me just type in like something like funny wine glass, right? And if I was going to launch some more wine glasses, I'm going to go click on a random product here. I'm going to scroll down to the category rankings and I'm going to click on to see the top 100 in wine glasses, right? This is how product research um, has been done for years and years and years. People would come in here and be like, oh, well, that's a new saying I haven't seen before. Uh, better rip that one off and duplicate it over with my own design, right? Like that's a very common thing. And then it's part of the reason why I launched in the wine glass with funny saying business myself is because it was so easy to replicate. And I also knew that somebody else would just rip me off eventually. Um, and so I didn't have to worry about uh, brand equity and being able to share those kinds of videos on my channel, right? But if, if you come in here, you can see like what's trending and, and you, can, you can clearly see that Tumblr's 
that are kind of like that Yeti cup type tumbler have overtaken the market over the last two years. And so like just the glass itself, not as many of them showing up. Um, you got some weirder fringe ones like that. And then you've got some Walt Disney stuff and all that kind of stuff. So this is very easy for somebody to come in. And, and this is what I wish the tool would do more of is showcase, you know, some in-demand products like that because uh, it'd be way more helpful. If we go back over to the new product section, though, one thing I do like, though, is the opportunity score indicates the ASIN opportunity based on historical and predicted demand, offer details, and your sales pattern. So it scores between 1,000 and 750. High score indicates high demand and low competition. This is very similar to what we've seen with other opportunity score uh, tools like Helium Tang and Jungle Scout. Um, and it's just a nifty way of saying, hey, there's a lot of people buying this product, not a very many people selling it. Uh, now, here's the word of caution, though, because what happens is everybody gets the same data set to work with. Well, if everybody's looking at HEM as sort of best sellers and incense sticks, and everybody sees that this is an 872, 972 opportunity score, then everybody and their dogs is going to come out and launch it. So the nice thing, though, is that everybody's different seller central dis uh, display platform is getting different results on the product recommendations. And so in theory, you shouldn't have the same data set as somebody else's because your data is customized based on what your account already carries. So the bad news is if you're a new seller, you, this data is not going to be helpful to you at all. The good news, though, is that if you're a seller and you've got, you know, five, 10 SKUs on your account, you should see dozens of new opportunities that are available here. Um, and they should be semi-unique to your account. So clearly in here, it's basically saying, hey, there's a lot of incense-related products because it's looking at some of my top sellers. I've sold more than 2,000 units in incense in the last 30 days. And so you're going to see a huge amount of opportunity uh, going over there. But at the same time, we try and click on a fresh cleaner like this, uh, try and load that. And, and, and again, I, I, the links are just broken here. It's kind of weird. I don't know why. Um, it could be related to the HTTPS. So I'm going to look it up manually. So you're also going to get some weird stuff in here. And it's like, okay, why would I be getting, you know, uh, a facial cleaner uh, as a recommendation on my listing? You know, there could be some, some bad data in the mix. But by and large, you can sort this data and filter it based on the opportunity score. Um, maybe you want to really focus on, on something that's merchant fulfilled for whatever reason. That's the MFN here. Uh, and then the retail, this is an Amazon uh, Vendor Central account selling that. And most people have historically avoided trying to sell products that are already carried by Vendor Central or by Amazon.com specifically because there's some risk in the competition. And, and as we put out some Monopoly videos uh, in the past, Amazon does kind of play a little bit dirty when it comes to that. Another fun thing you can do is export this to Excel. Maybe you want to put a monthly activity um, assignment to download this once a month just so you can keep up with it. Sometimes things are a little bit easier to filter out in an Excel sheet versus the portal itself. So if we come in here and hit the filter button and then let's say, hey, I want to look at um, only drinking cups. Let's see what comes up. And in here we have, you know, roughly 100 products, a lot of Yeti stuff. You can see the brands in this column here and, and what's going up. But again, very high opportunity scores. And it's saying like, hey, I think you should launch things over here. I don't know why they selected 750 as the cutoff on the opportunity score. Maybe they feel like once they're at 750 or higher or below that, rather, uh, they have enough people selling in that category. But you can look at the browse nodes on the very far right. So if you want to narrow that down even further, let's say I just want to look at just wine glasses and see what that does. It brings my list down here to just a couple dozen. Um, and that's that could be you know the opportunity to go look at. So now if we try and open up column C here and look at the various different, you're going to see some Rydell. I don't know if that's how you actually say that, but they're one of the top sellers brands in the space. So I don't see a lot of like, uh, um, you know, customizable private label type items. I see very kind of high level category things that are being, you know, filtered in the list here. Overall though, I do think we're six to 12 months out from the seller central portal catching up or even becoming even remotely close to the Helium 10 or Jungle Scout portal tools. And that's primarily because the ability to filter and really find things by keyword is just simply not there yet in the Seller Central dashboard. So I think it's fun to look at for 15 minutes to try and come up with your next product for 2022, maybe give you like a starting point, but it's not going to give you the ability to drill down enough to make conclusive data decisions. So you're still going to need to have product 
uh, opportunity explorer type tools in a third party tool such as Helium 10 or Jungle Scout. And by the way, if you want a discount signing up for Helium 10, we got a discount 50% off your first month. Click on the link at the top of the comments or in the top of the description there. And for other videos, checking out other things in Seller Central, watch these playlists.